Thank you for being here and I hope everyone's doing okay. I trust that you heard what went on in court, so I'm not gonna repeat much of that. Instead, I'll just make a brief statement and then answer a few questions before I go back inside. I appreciate your waiting. We were meeting with the victim families and victims who are here, and I actually have a couple members of Ricky Old's family out here with me now. And the rest of the victim families are inside, and although they appreciate the attention and support from the community, they're not looking to talk to the media today. But a couple things I'll touch on first, as you heard, the court has ordered, uh, pursuant to the request from the defense, and as required by law, she's ordered a competency evaluation to take place at the Boulder County Jail. Those results would then be provided to the defense and the prosecution. Under the law, either side could then request a second evaluation and possibly even a hearing that would take place. So there's gonna be a couple steps here that we go through in terms of competency and whether the defendant is competent. And what I mean by competency is whether he has a rational understanding of the court proceedings and he's able to assist in his own defense. The court also set the preliminary hearing and proof evident presumption great for October 19th at 1 p.m. And I'm pleased that the case is continuing to move forward and that the court set it for October 19th as opposed to pushing it far uh, further out because certainly the victims and their families want this case to move forward as quickly as possible, as do us at the district attorney's office. So as I mentioned in court, we currently have 14 individuals awaiting a competency evaluation at the state hospital, 14 in what's called the restoration process, and then 28 who've gone through the process to some extent and are still located at the state hospital. So that's just out of Boulder County. So that's 56 individuals who are going through the competency process just out of cases from Boulder County. And when you think about that statewide, it speaks to the possible delays that could result if the defendant was moved to the state hospital for the evaluation. So the court took that into consideration, as you heard, and ordered that the evaluation take place at the Boulder County Jail. But she also set that proof evident presumption great and preliminary hearing for October 19th. So as you know, and as we continue to talk to the victims' families about, this case is gonna be a long journey. It is gonna take quite some time. And by quite some time, I mean 18 to 24 months. And I wanna to continue to emphasize that, just so the victims, their loved ones, and the community have a clear understanding of how the criminal justice process works in every case. This is obviously a horrific mass killing. And there's gonna take, it's gonna take a long time for it to be prosecuted. We currently have a case going on, there's a trial going on right upstairs right now where uh, the shooting took place two years ago. So it was nearly two years ago that I went out on that shooting case and it's now being tried. That's the kind of delay we see in these cases for some good reason, some valid reasons I should say. The criminal justice process takes a long time. And if I could wave a magic wand and change one thing, just one thing, it would be to speed up the process of the criminal justice system. So with that in mind, I wanna emphasize this case has had a horrific and tremendous impact on the victims, their loved ones, and the community. And it's ripped a hole through so many lives. And we have 37 victims in the case, but I think it's fair to say that a lot more people were hurt by this attack than just the victims. So I wanna emphasize, and I ask the members of the media to pass along that the Boulder Strong Resource Center, which is located at 2935 Baseline, is available to all members of the community. It's a beautiful facility, I would encourage you to go and just check it out. And so you can spread the word to members of the community. They have therapists there, massage, massage spe specialists, acupuncture, uh, counselors available, and it's just a really beautiful setup. And it's supported and staffed by mental health partners and others to make sure that we're taking care of the victims and their loved ones, but also community members who've been impacted by the shooting. So I really wanted to emph emph excuse me, emphasize that the Boulder Strong Resource Center is available to all members of the community. Another thing you've heard me say before, but I'm gonna repeat, it's easy and important for us to focus on the defendant and the prosecution of the criminal case. But I wanna to continue to lift up and honor the victims in this case. And the community has done that. The community of Boulder and Colorado as a whole has united to help the victims and their family members as much as we possibly can. That should and must continue for us as a community. So I could talk about Nevin Stanisic, who was the first victim killed in the King Supers parking lot. He was 23 years old, a hardworking young man. We could talk about Kevin Mahoney, 
Trelona Rakoviak, Ricky Olds, Denny Stong, Lynn Murray, Terry Liker, Jody Waters, Suzanne Fountain, and Eric Talley. And we should talk about them. We should honor them. And it is an honor to fight for justice for them and for their loved ones. But we should continue to lift them up through this process. The focus and the energy will be on the criminal case. But I don't want us, any of us, to lose sight of the victims in this case. So I will continue to lift them up and ask you to join me in supporting their families and the community as a whole. Speaking of uh, Eric Talley, I just want to acknowledge Congressman Nagoose. As you may know, Representative Nagoose has introduced a bill in Congress to have the post office in South Boulder named in honor of Officer Talley. So I just want to recognize and thank uh, Representative Nagoose for doing that because indeed Officer Talley acted with tremendous heroism on that day. And when the Boulder police and other law enforcement officers entered the King Supers, no further shots were fired. No one else was injured or killed after law enforcement went charging into the store. And they de demonstrated tremendous heroism and courage in doing so. And I can't help but recognize, acknowledge that this Saturday is the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And on that day, we lost over 400 first responders who went charging into a mass attack. When others were fleeing for their lives, law enforcement, firefighters, and other first responders, including three court officers, actually, from the courthouse in downtown Manhattan, went from the courthouse and ran down to the Twin Towers. So when I think about the courage of first responders, I, I also recognize that the 20th anniversary of 9-11 is this Saturday. It's hard to believe 20 years have gone by. I will say, before I take questions, that uh, the defendant is innocent unless and until proven guilty. As you know, I'm required to say that each time I speak with you, so I appreciate you allowing me to do so again. And I do want to thank you for being here, because I think it's important that you, the community have a clear understanding of what's going on with the case. So I'll take a few brief questions if you have any. Michael, the, the defense attorney pointed out that even though the prelim was rescheduled for October 19th, he thought it was highly unlikely that it would happen because either um, Alyssa would be declared incompetent or if she's declared competent, they're going to challenge it. Would you, would you agree with that assessment? That, that, it won't, that the prelim won't happen on October 19th? I would say I appreciate the judge pushing to have the prelim on October 19th, and whether it actually takes place or not will depend on what the result of the competency evaluation is and whether either side asks for a second competency evaluation to take place. It's not that he's wrong, but I do think it's important for us to continue to push forward with this case. So if things change between now and October 19th, the victim families and we are prepared to adjust to whatever comes up and to overcome that obstacle. Does the evaluation that the defense has indicated they have already had done, does that count as the second evaluation they are entitled to or would they get another one pending the, the results of the so I have not seen that evaluation. That was the first that's been shared or mentioned by the defense. Uh, they can share it if they wish, and you may have heard that being addressed by the court, but that will not count as one of the two evaluations, no. Lincoln, you spoke to the families you mentioned just a little while ago. Uh, are they extremely disappointed that what was supposed to happen today, the prelim, did not happen? And I know many of them probably have come from a good distance uh, to perhaps see and hear some disappointment. So it's a good question, Jim. Thank you. I would say they're very disappointed and very frustrated that the preliminary hearing did not take place today. They fully anticipated from our discussions that there would be delays due to the possibility of a mental health defense. It's that the delay happened just six days before the preliminary hearing that caused the victims a lot of frustration. But they also understand that this is a long journey and we're going to walk each step together. I would say 18 March? months from now, 18 to 24 months from March, yes. And is that, yeah. does that take into, uh, sorry, into account competency and having to maybe possibly treat the defendant to become restored? Does that include that or is that, would that be extra time? That's a good question. It could be longer or shorter depending on the results of the competency evaluation. Would the victim's family like to assist in the choice? I don't believe so. Uh, they wanted to come out here and they've been very involved in the case from day one. And I appreciate them being here. It's an honor to fight for justice for Ricky and her family. Nick, just one more. So you alluded to this already, but is it fair to say that you, you're frustrated with the pace of this case in court? It's a good question. Am I frustrated with the pace of this? I want to see the case move forward as quickly as possible for the victims and their families. But uh, 
As a prosecutor who's been doing this work for 23, 24 years, I'm not surprised by the pace of it. I just want to continue to push forward as much as we possibly can. So I wouldn't say I'm frustrated. I would say the, court, uh, the judge did what she had to do today, and I respect that, and we'll just continue to work through each obstacle on this journey. Okay. Thank you so much, and have a great day.